Hey guys, Awakening Animations here and I just want to do a quick tutorial showing you guys some new features in Substance Painter and how we can utilize Blender and Substance Painter to really create nice props and environment assets really quickly. Um, so anyway, we're going to use a basic shape so I'm just going to subdivide this cube here and set it to smooth. So I'm not going to enable screen pass keys because it's really something simple I'm doing here. Next I'm going to add a subdivision modifier. So there we go with one level here and I'm going to apply this guy straight away. Um, the scale would be quite big here. I just want to make a rock so I'm just going to scale it down and clear the scale immediately. Um, so yeah, I'll, I've already made mine so I'm just showing you guys quickly how you would do this it's really simple so we're just trying to make a rock um, bring the strength down a bit here um, so yeah just something with some uneven shapes uh, there's some symmetry enabled here we don't want that so let's remove the symmetry and get back and just now and then change our brush stroke um, We'll come at different angles here yeah, and just change this rock's shape into a rock. <laughs> oh, okay, that's stupid. Okay, so I'm really not gonna go overboard here. Something like that's really fine for what I'm trying to do. We're gonna shade this guy smooth, and that's what we've got. We definitely need to UV unwrap this guy, so I'm gonna do a very ugly quick UV unwrap. Uh, I want to drop this guy material here and let's add just a quick image here that we're going to give a color grid. Um, we can leave it like that. I'm not even going to name this guy. So that's what we got. Um, set it here in our texture. Quickly image texture. Set that up here and just change this to look dev and there we go. So looking at this we could actually use this UV it's the one we get with the cube since we've only divided it so yeah there's no problems here although if you're working in a software where seams are a problem this would be a problem um, anyway uh, the way I'd unwrap this myself is I just grab these faces here say you unwrap bring this guy down quite a bit bring it here and then I'm going to use Alt to select this guy, change this to UVs, and I get this piece. You unwrap, and we get this funky circle here. Um, I really don't like how these pieces came out all crazy like that. So let's just do some slight editing. And usually, this kind of editing I'm doing here is bad. You're going to do this, and you're going to look at your textures, and you're going to be like, whoa okay what happened so don't do too much of this kind of editing unless you know what you're doing so I'm just gonna minimize some stretch here stop it immediately and that's what we got fine I'm not gonna play with it too much but a problem we do see here is this small one is too big this should just come over here and bring this here and let's just look at the block sizes here. So the small one's too small at the moment. We just need these blocks to kind of be equivalent, more or less. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. It should be fine. Nothing's overlapping. We almost have everything in the one-to-one -one space. That would have been a mistake. Anyway, there we go. Everything's in the one-to-one -one space. Just bits, but it's there. Oh, that wasted too much time. Anyway, let's get over with this. Uh, let's just change this to rock. Change our material to rock. And remove this image thing here back to whatever remove 
and let's export this guy to so export fbx drop it on my desktop here rock i've already got one which i said to you guys i did so i'll just say underscore one here selected objects export and that's all you've got to do um let's open up painter here i've got painter open so here we go you just import your object new um select it and that's it so yeah your your painter might look a bit different when you open it up uh, i just made my background dark so i don't see the environment map and here we go so here you can see the wireframe so you know it's our low poly rock so i'm going to remove that now and the next thing you want to do when you come into painter notes i'm using the latest version 2019 um, here we're going to have a new tab in shader settings for displacement and tessellation it's going to be enabled automatically here you have an option to use a displacement map if you have one, but otherwise it just grabs from your height, final height output from your material. Okay, so you will set up your scale a bit. You can always scale this up right up just to see what you're getting. And this is where you set your subdivision count. So it's quite cool. Um, it's all uniform, so everything's being subdivided the same. And then we've got edge length where we can set an edge length um, in order to only have those or edges with those lengths subdivided. Okay. Oof, that was complicated. Okay, so that's all you've got to do. And then we just need some materials here. So you can go into substance source. Um, let me just drag it over here. Here's substance source. Of, I've got a paid version, um, so yours might look different. But just search for a rock material and a moss material. I think this one's free, um, Mossy Mido, Mido, and the rock I'm using is uh, called, who knows what's it called, Rock Dash Iran. Okay, cool. So let's see what this does. All I did was drag this Rock Dash Iran up in here, and that's what we get. You can see the displacement in real time right here. It looks really nice. Um, here we can play with these settings so you can really see what's happening here. If I remove the subdivision, it's going to look really ugly. Um, no displacement at all. So this is how it would look um, normally, just with your normal map and your height map. It still looks good. It looks well in a game, but yeah this is going to be the real deal because you're going to get real shadows bouncing off of here from your lights and your environments reacting well to this um, rock here instead of illusions and things like that you also have got a parallax here which is quite interesting where do i find this parallax here yeah, parallax occlusion mapping i'm not too sure what that is but i think it has something to do with the ambient ambient occlusion um, to help the parallax um, illusion. Okay, so here I showed you guys what happens when we play with the um, subdivision counts. Here, let's look at the displacement. So, yeah, it can go really, really crazy. Um, got some crazy details on here. And by the way, I'm on 2K for anyone wondering here. And I didn't even bake my textures. I'm bad. Uh, let's move this back down. 0 0.04, I think. Yeah, that seems to be a good amount for this rock. Um, since we here, yeah, I might as well quickly bake these maps. Leave it like that. It's fine. Common settings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Anti-aliasing. Yes. I'm gonna get some errors because there's some things not provided here, like ID maps. But otherwise, it should go quite quickly. Um, thickness usually takes a while. Anyway, there we go. So now this rock should even look better. Um, anyway, so with that said, we can come in and play with this even more. So let's drop in our mossy here. So Iceland moss on top. And it's going to be over the rock 
cover everything at the moment. So this moss here has got a rock with it. Can I remove the rock? Mossy coverage. This that should be covering the rock completely. Okay, not really. Okay, so that's not what I want. So maybe just this ground moss is going to be something better. Oh, there we go. Now we've got our full coverage actually on this. Let's add a black mask here. And although this rock doesn't look wet or like it would be something with moss, but here we can just directly come and paint our moss on here. Okay, I'm not really liking the effect of this moss, so let's see what this ground moss does. Put our height on that, some basic parameters. And yeah, so now we can use any alpha here as well to drive our brush. Uh, I don't know, what do we have here? Yeah. It's smudge, it's cloudy maybe. And yeah, we can come and paint this moss in real time on our displaced mesh and get displacement from our moss. So maybe the moss needs to be scaled some more. Let's put it on triplanar and let's drop the moss with a scale of 4 maybe so that's better and our height is a bit crazy here so let's bring it down again yeah I like that open gel so yeah now we're painting our moss and it's in real time and we can change this to 4K over here. And yeah, it's going to take a bit since it's I'm running 4K here. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, here we've got much more detail showing on this rock. Here we might want to bring the tessellation a bit lower something like that and yeah we can export these maps and I will do that and upload the video separately but yeah we'll export these maps and test it out in Blender anyway I hope you guys enjoy that and excites you to use Substance Painter um, it's really cool and they've got some really crazy cool new features um, yeah I'm even so excited about it. Let's go here. Um, should be something strokes, dynamic strokes. Here like an autumn leaf. And let's kind of draw this guy. I mean, that's just so epic if you ask me. Um, Just come here and add some leaves with some strokes and they, they dynamically change size, rotation and into different shapes. As you can see we've got a different shape here, different shape here, we've got normal detail, um, everything coming from this. It's really really cool and yeah I'm gonna undo that so that I can export these maps and show you guys how it looks in Blender.